ladies and gentlemen, our second Launch Talk speaker, Dr. Karan Merchandani. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. And they stay there. Wow, look at this beautiful, hungover crowd. <laughs> so I, I heard some amazing words yesterday, and the words were, be here now. So I really want to make sure you guys are with me here now. I heard we have people from four states, so I'm going to stay, say the name of your state, and when I say that, you need to make as much noise as you can. Are you guys ready? OK, let's hear it, Virginia. <laughs> Where are you, Alabama? <laughs> South Carolina, let's hear it. <laughs> North Carolina, where are you? <laughs> I have to do one more, you know, I have to represent. So, Carolinas Dennis, make some noise! <laughs> you know, I have to say thank you to Dr. Cameron um, for saying my name correctly. Because when I first meet people, I spend the first few minutes teaching them how to say my name. <laughs> Recently, someone wrote me a review on Google, and they called me Dr. Mechanical. <laughs> it, 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 it's not that, I promise. My name is Karan Merchandani. Merchandani like merchandise. People who are close to me call me Merch, so all of you are welcome to do that. I moved from India at age 16. My parents didn't have enough money for us to get dental work done, but one day, I got to visit my cousin at his dental appointment, and it was like a light went off. I knew I wanted to be a dentist. Thinking back, it's possible it could have been the curing light. <laughs> so my parents supported this dream, and at 16, I moved from India, left my parents back there, and moved in with my mom's step-parents in Texas. And it was like living with any step-parents in the movies. I told them I wanted to see what America was all about, so they took me to the most American places possible. Walmart and Olive Garden. <laughs> and at some point, we figured out you could buy the Olive Garden dressing at Walmart, and then it was just Walmart. <laughs> so the following year, I moved in with my dad's uncle in New Jersey, and it was a much better year, but they said, you know, we can only take you in for one year. So at 18, I moved into the Rutgers dorms. I had an amazing time at Rutgers. I was a resident assistant for three years, in charge of over 200 students, started learning about the American traditions, you know, burgers and hot dogs on July 4th, turkey on Thanksgiving, eggnog on Christmas. Yeah, I'm a foodie, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, every holiday season, though, I'd see hundreds and hundreds of students get picked up by their families. There'd be cars backed up, traffic jams everywhere, cries of joy as families got together. In those moments, I realized how alone I really was here. I have a lot of uncles and aunts in New Jersey, but I was the outcast boy from India with no car, no money, and a comb over to cover his receding hairline. <laughs> my mom would spend hours with me on Skype, despite calls being broken and blurry back in those days. For the next few days, sometimes even a couple of weeks, it'd be just me and the sound of the wind gushing through those empty dorms. Thank God we had free and fast Wi-Fi, and for those $5 Chinese lunch specials that I'd split over two meals. My parents made significant sacrifices to send me to this country and they continued to make sacrifices while I was here. Eventually, I made some great friends, and one year, I got invited to Thanksgiving. I was ecstatic. If dining hall food made me gain that freshman 20, I couldn't imagine how good this food would be. <laughs> I, I was looking forward to it, so Thanksgiving Day comes around, and my friend drives us to our family home. So we pull up to the house, and the parking lot's full. House is small. Think of the smallest house you can. This is probably smaller. We go in, and I think I'm back in India, because this place is packed. There are people everywhere, shoulder to shoulder. You couldn't make a turn without getting candied yams on your elbow or dropping someone's drink. But I didn't care. I was just so happy to be there. Right before the big meal, the host says he's going to do a prayer. So my friend's trapped in the other room. I'm in the kitchen, hold hands with strangers next to me. Yes, there's a time we used to do that. And I don't remember the whole prayer, except for the end, when the host said, thank you, God for bringing all of us together, all our family, and our friend. Right there, in that moment, I started crying. 
because I realized it had been so long since I had not felt alone. It had been so long since I felt like a part of a family, and it had been so long since I felt like I belonged. See, when I left India, I left everything behind, including my identity. I was no longer Karan Mirchandani, I was Karan Merchandani. I was an American citizen, but I was the guy with the accent, the guy from India, the guy who knew nothing about America. To be honest, it's the leadership of my parents that gave me the confidence to continue down this path. And fast forward about 15 years, I'm still building what I lost at 16. In 2018, I moved from New Jersey to North Carolina. I had just finished dental school, and now I was Dr. Merchandani. I was on top of the world. Now it was all about making as much money as I could. See, I come from a lower middle class family in India, and there have been days when my parents have not eaten to feed my sister and I. Growing up in Bombay, I used to think a Honda Accord was the best car you could buy. <laughs> if I saw one part, I'd walk up to it, look inside, and be amazed by the luxurious pleather. Now that I had the means to make a good income, I would let nothing get in the way. So I started working six days a week. As Dr. Cameron said, I probably would have worked Sundays if there was no church. But things started to feel like it wasn't right after doing this for about two years. I started getting home so tired. I'd sit on the floor in my scrubs, because you know I didn't want to touch the furniture, and I'd fall asleep like that on many nights. My exhaustion, coupled with my oversized ego, made me irritable all the time. This didn't happen one night, it happened slowly over time. What happened first was things started to feel a little iffy. You know, does everyone know what I mean when I say the word iffy, by the way? L let, let me explain. Let's say your friend is telling you about this amazing new restaurant, and they're raving about it, they've gone there for birthdays and anniversaries, so you decide to give it a try. You go there, you walk to your table, given your menus, you put your elbows on the table, and it sticks just a little bit you're probably feeling a little iffy about the restaurant. <laughs> or let's say you just cemented a crown. Everything went great until you saw that post-op x-ray. The margins closed, but not all the way closed. So you turn off the filter, you're playing with the brightness and contrast. You stand six feet away like you're social distancing from the crown. You're probably feeling a little iffy about the crown. When I decided things needed to change and I needed a new job, I called Dr. Cameron. That first phone call, he told me all about Carolina's dentist. The mission, the core values, what makes them different, the technology, the schedule, the fact that I could never work a Sunday. After the pitch, he paused. For some reason, I thought he'd continue to say more, so I didn't say anything. And it felt like three minutes must have gone by when he said, well, um, do you have any questions? Are you still awake? In that moment, I started freaking out because I thought there was no way I was getting this job because I just came off like the most awkward person ever. <laughs> Luckily, I got the position, so thank you, Dr. Cameron. Now, working three days a week at Carolina's Dentist instead of the six days has given me the most important thing I needed, time. Time to rest, time for CE courses, time to play with my dog, Bella. Most importantly, time for my mental and physical health. See, being a good leader, comes at great personal sacrifice. Not only are we responsible for our jobs, we're also responsible for the people responsible for other jobs. In this stage of my life, Carolina Zenis is still helping me build the identity I lost at 16. I've met some of the most amazing people working at Carolina Zenis Rayford in the last two years. They're some of the hardest working people I know, so this feels like a good time to give a shout out because we had, Carolina Zenis Rayford had the number one, and the number two, and the number fourth highest producing hygienists in all of Lightwave in all of 2021. <laughs> but these are also some of the nicest people I know. I've learned so much about them in these last two years, but what has touched my heart is how open they've been to learning about me. I don't go to work with a mask on, like, except the N95. <laughs> But I bring the Quran from India and the Quran from America, and they've accepted me for who I am. When I finished dental school in New York and moved to North Carolina, I learned something about myself. When people first meet me, they think I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I 
when I first found out about this, it really bothered me, and I tried very hard to change it. But they say you make your first impression in seven seconds, and I haven't been able to fix this. So now, I just blame it on the New York in me. When I joined Carolina's Dentist, one of our front office staff, her name was Celeste. She had been part of Carolina's Dentist longer than I had, so she knew more about the Carolina's Dentist way than I did. A few months later, we found out she wanted to join the clinical team. I'm talking to the manager, and I had my hesitations because I didn't think Celeste and my personality would be a good fit on the same team. Let me explain. Celeste loves Disney. Love is an understatement. <laughs> she did a five-month Disney college program in Florida. She brings coffee in various Disney mugs and has a Steamboat Willie tattoo on her arm. I mean, she's one step away from being related to Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, I could not hold a conversation about Disney for more than 30 seconds. So I try one day to go and make some small talk with her, and I see she has this Yellow Monsters ink mug, and I ask her about it, and she's like, oh yeah, it lets out screams. And I'm thinking, she's joking. She is actually unscrewing the top, and the cup literally starts screaming. My mouth is saying the words, wow, that's pretty cool, while I'm pretty sure my face is saying, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Today, Celeste has become one of my strongest dental assistants ever. We work so well together that patients have often complimented us on how well we work as teammates, but also on the experience the patient gets when we're treating them. And it started to dawn on me that self-awareness is a big part of being a great leader. We go through rigorous training to become hygienists, dental assistants, dentists, practice managers, and eventually, we're put into positions where we oversee people who used to do the job that we did. This, is, this puts us in an authority position, but not, does not make us a leader. Being a leader is like being a parent, providing education, opportunity, discipline when necessary, the chance to try and fail and learn from those failures, and building self-confidence. My parents were the leaders I needed to continue down this path I have on, and I'm just holding the torch they passed on to me. My first day at NYU, I was told to go into the auditorium and sit down with a group in the corner. At the front of the group, there was a piece of paper that said Studley. I had no idea who where Studley was, but I eventually met him, and he was my group practice director. He's probably had the most influence on the type of dentist I am today. He graduated from NYU himself and was on his way to becoming a highly successful dentist, when suddenly he needed nerve surgery in both arms and was said he could no longer practice dentistry. He went from being a successful dentist to the salesman of the red biohazard bags that are used in clinics. Most of his clients were his own classmates. A year later, the disability insurance company denied his claims, and he lost the appeal in court. He was at rock bottom when he decided to open his own disability insurance brokerage and joined NYU as faculty and became a group practice director. I never heard him say no when someone asked for help, and he taught me that there's always time and always energy to do the things you really care about. Even when he was waiting for hip replacement surgery and was using a walking stick, he moved faster than every other faculty. After clinic, he'd drive to New Jersey or Long Island, wherever his next client wanted to meet. He, right before graduation, he told me, I should one day give back to dentistry by teaching someone the way someone taught me. And he was my motivation to apply for a position at UNC Dental School. So one day, I'm in the manager's office, put my shirt on top of my scrubs, you know, scrub pants on the bottom, shirt and tie on the top, and I do the online interview, I didn't get the position. I guess they must have seen that outfit. <laughs> but I remember how Dr. Studley never backed down. So I went around the doctors who interviewed me and emailed administration and said, let me come in as a volunteer. They didn't say no to free labor, and a few weeks later, I was teaching there. About two months after I started teaching there, the doctor who interviewed me saw me and said, you look familiar. I was like, yeah, I applied. I didn't get the job. And he stood there confused as to how I was there anyway. And he, he, I think he was keeping an eye on me and seeing what I was doing with the students, because about a few months after that, he came back to me one day and said, I think you should apply for the position again. I think you'll get it this time. 
December 2021, UNC hired me as adjunct faculty. I'm sure we get a lot of patients who come to our office and say, Doc, I'm coming for my cleanings every six months. Why do I still get cavities? I'm assuming we tell them it's not just the six-month cleanings, but it's the daily act of brushing twice a day that prevents cavities. Brushing twice in one day does nothing. Brushing twice every single day is what makes the difference. This conference is like that six-month cleaning. There's going to be a lot of call to action, a lot of sharing of knowledge, but it's going to be our intentional effort to be good leaders every single day that'll make all the difference. I truly believe that a ship is not sailed forward by one person. It's about the whole team coming together and doing their role in moving the ship forward. I'm so happy and so grateful for the opportunity to be on this stage today, but I'm not the only one who deserves to be here. So please welcome my family from Carolina's Dennis Rayford, Dr. Bradley Langley, Practice Manager, Paulina Franco. <laughs> Assistant Practice Manager, Nicole Lipari. <laughs> Hygiene Director, Lauren Collins. <laughs> and Lead Dental Assistant, Donna Cannon. <laughs> we stand here today so you can ask a few questions about your leadership and your self-awareness. Are you being an iffy leader? Are you being a good leader by taking care of those in your charge? Are you overcoming the roadblocks and hurdles? I'd like to end with an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So let's go together. Thank you. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind.